roughly speaking, our course, uh, the, uh, our bioinformatics uh, course will be divided into the following topics. We will first start with sequence analysis, which is the study of gene and protein sequences. The sequence of characters that, that make up the DNA or the protein will be the topic of sequence analysis. Phylogeny refers to comparing um, different proteins, different genes within the same species or across different species and figuring out their history, figuring out how they are related to each other and making inferences about their relationships. Okay. Structure refers to the three-dimensional structure of the biomolecules, whether it be uh, protein structures or RNA structures, um, and we will try to look at the methods that computationally identify these structures and also make use of them to make functional inferences about the genes and the proteins involved. Expression refers to how much things are expressed in the cell or in the tissue. So you may have a gene, you may have a particular sequence uh, in all of your cells in your body, but what makes a liver tissue different than a brain tissue is how much each gene is being expressed. So the expression levels will be uh, the topic of uh, expression. We can look at the gene expression at the, the RNA levels. We can look at the protein expression uh, using different methods and see how well the expression levels correlate with a particular phenotype. That could be either um, tissue specificity or it could be a certain disease. So some genes go upregulated or downregulated with certain diseases and being able to detect that is very useful uh, in biomedical research. Pathways refers to looking at the interactions between biomolecules. A protein is not really acting on, uh, by itself. It's, it's um, working together with other proteins to perform a biological function. Looking at the interaction of proteins, we can, we can uh, get some further insight about uh, their impact uh, for the phenotype in the cell. Okay. So the pathway will involve looking at graph-based algorithms, trying to find how critical a protein is for the system, um, looking at the hub genes and non-hub genes at, and identify the, um, the context that a protein is involved in and its impact in the total, in the overall system. Okay. Sequence is gonna make up most of our analysis. In each of these other topics, we will refer back to the methods that we described in the sequence topic. Um, so that, that topic is gonna to be very critical. Make sure that you understand the algorithms involved in the sequence analysis well before we move on to the other topics, okay? Bioinformatics is, is generally defined as representation, storage, retrieval, and analysis of biological data. And this biological data can be sequence, structure, function, and interaction. Okay. Another definition for bioinformatics is transfer of information from known to the unknown, and that is usually done via similarity. When we do sequencing and identify the genetic sequence of a new organism, we may not know much about what that organism does and what genes it has that would require us to do years of uh, biological experiments. But what we can do is take the known existing genomes and what we know about them and transfer information for those organisms to this new organism that we are studying. Okay. So that transfer of information is accomplished via uh, bioinformatics tools such as sequence similarity and some machine learning to sort of uh, extract patterns across different set of data. I'm gonna review some sample problems that we can uh, look at in using bioinformatics tools. Um, one problem is looking at different species and trying to identify what they have in common. Before the genetics genome sequences were available, um, we would only be able to, we were only able to look at the anatomy of these organisms and do comparisons via their anatomy or their functions. Um, which is not really accurate, which was not accurate. 
The genetic sequences provide a more accurate information about the evolutionary history of these organisms and the traces of their um, history is now available within their genetic sequence. When we look at, at the genome of these different organisms as shown by these arcs in this figure, so each arc is representing the genome of a particular organism. So here's humans and monkey and chimpanzee. The links between the organisms show similar regions within their genomes. Okay. So a figure like this uh, gives us a quick glance of the rearrangements that went on through the evolutionary history between these different genomes or which genes are common across different organisms and which ones are not. Okay. Visualization itself is an important topic. Uh, we are not going to um, discuss much about the visualization techniques, but it's, I will expose you to some of the visualization tools and, uh, and uh, methods available so that you guys can interpret the figures that you may encounter in, in, the, in different publications. Okay. Once we look at a single organism and its genome, we may want to know what genes it has. All right. Um, the genes that an organism has will be, will have adapted to its environment and it will determine what functions can be accomplished by that organism. Okay. A, a popular bioinformatics problem is taking a sequence of DNA and figuring out what genes are present within that DNA segment. Your first assignment will solve this problem, but we will simplify it um, and not deal with all the details of this problem um, so that it's uh, manageable within the context of this course. Okay. With, <laughs> given a genetic sequence, we can follow rules that define what a gene is, and these rules have been determined by looking at a large collection of D DNA sequences. Um, so there's some biological knowledge that go into determining um, how we can identify the genes, such as a gene would start would have a particular start codon, uh, a particular stop codon. So that information is is uh, made available um, after having looked at a large collection of data. Okay. So rule extraction can be done manually by observing uh, these different signals. It can also be done automatically using machine learning methods where now the machine learning method would be given a large collection of data and it will uh, build a model that's able to identify where a gene is and where it is where there is not. Okay. So some segments of the genome uh, contain non-coding regions, meaning they don't encode any genes. Okay. We will look at the structure of the DNA later in the course. When we zoom into a single gene, we would like to know what that gene does. What is, what's its functionality? Why is it there? What purpose does it serve for the organism? And for that, we typically look at how similar it is to other genes within the same organism or other genes within uh, other species, okay? There are some questions that we can ask and answer through similarity when a similar protein is not available or we don't know uh, much about similar proteins, we can again apply some prediction tools to answer functionally relevant questions such as where does this gene go? Does it stay in the cytoplasm? Does it go back, to, back into the nucleus? We can answer these questions just by looking at the sequence of the DNA. Okay. What other proteins does it interact with? We can again find the answers or, or predict the answers to these questions just by looking at the sequence and uh, sometimes combining it and enriching it with additional information that we may have about this protein. Okay. A common type of experiment that uh, biomedical researchers do is take a collection of samples that, are, uh, that have a disease and compare them with another collection of samples that are normal and identify the cause of the disease 
or identify what is different between these two sets of samples. Okay. In this example, I am showing a, a, a figure that represents um, samples collected for a prostate cancer study. And the question that we are trying to address is which genes are responsible for prostate cancer? Okay. Rows represent genes. Columns here represent samples. Some of these samples uh, may be prostate cancer. Some of them may be normal samples. The figure gives you a visual overview of the gene expression levels for all of these genes in all of these samples. Okay. Red is high, blue is low. And you can sort of see that this cluster of genes are overexpressed within those samples compared to these other samples. Okay. With these types of studies, it's going to be important to recognize, uh, to acknowledge that um, when you see a gene being overexpressed and under, or underexpressed in a set of samples, it doesn't mean that it has a causal uh, relationship to the disease itself. It may just be correlational. So it may not be causing the disease, it may just be a result of the disease. To identify the causal relationships, one would have to do further biological experiments, such as what happens when I knock that gene out of the system? Uh, does it still have the disease? What happens when I increase the expression of that gene? Uh, does, does, it have, uh, does the disease progress faster? So you can set up a biological experiment to address uh, your hypothesis that you have generated from this types of data-driven experiments. Okay. And as a final example, let's look at this network of um, proteins or genes where the goal may be to optimize biofuel product production. So you have, a, you have an output from the system and you have a very complex system that, is, um, that goes on in the cell. You would want to identify parts of the system that can be further improved to increase the production of the final output. Can I add another enzyme here or can I knock down, uh, knock out an enzyme from the system uh, such that an inhibition is removed and the production is improved? These types of analysis can be qualitative by looking at the interactions. They can also be quantitative where differential equations would have to be uh, involved detailed uh, detailed differential equations where the coefficients for each reaction is modeled. And then you can get a more accurate uh, simulation of the system and test out different ideas for uh, optimizing your final output. The topic of simulation is gonna be left for our biosimulation classes. I'm not going to go into differential equation modeling of these systems. We will only look at uh, the graph types of algorithms for analyzing pathways and networks.